And we will, of course, avoid uh, having this uh, toast take place before all of you have a glass in the hand, which should give me a few minutes to give you a sense about why this night is extraordinarily special, not only to all of us who celebrate Yuri Gagarin and that remarkable flight, but also to the history of the Space Shuttle and to the history of ISU. Because all of us, all of us share April 12th together. And so you will be celebrating tonight not only Yuri's extraordinarily courageous statement, let's go, when no one had in fact ever gone before. Uh, the only person we knew to ever sit on that many firecrackers had been a Chinese hero many years before, whose body was never found. And so there was an extraordinary amount of courage sitting, sitting on top of Vostok 1, knowing that nobody had done that before. And then in 1981, on April 12th, the first shuttle, the first attempt to send anything that big, or anything that, as Buzz Aldrin says, for some strange reason had put a cockpit on a booster and decided that it was a human spacecraft <laughs> uh, into, uh, into orbit. And yet, not only has it worked, but what I think history will think to be one of the great accomplishments of humankind, the International Space Station, as expensive as it has been, um, was made possible because of the incredible capacities that the shuttle brought. ISU was a few years later, 1987. Three young space enthusiasts with extraordinary educations came to realize that they had acquired great depth in their discipline, but wished to understand each other's disciplines, wished to understand what it would take to work across national and disciplinary and cultural lines to make the human experience of space not only worldwide, but first system-wide, and then perhaps, why not, the galaxy and beyond. A university started by students that today celebrates its 21st birthday, which is why I can legally consume this <laughs> that has begun to recognize that the three eyes really are being joined, and man, can I see it in this crowd by the fourth eye. Because intergenerational has become part of our mission. Bringing together space's greatest generation with the generation that will be greater still, and which will prepare a third generation to be yet again greater. Because the real secret of moving forward is to recognize that at the far frontier where even the greatest vision becomes dim what matters most is whether you have taught the next generation to see that's what I think all of us want to do that's what Yuri Gagarin wanted to do as he spoke from space about the beauty of what he was seeing and, and gave that extraordinarily moving phrase that goaded us to not destroy the beauty that he was seeing. Now there's another story of Yuri Gagarin. This is the 40th anniversary of his death. Because Yuri did not live to be an old man. Yuri Gagarin died in 1968. I actually remember that. My, my grandfather was Russian and my uncle inherited all of that Russian spirit. And so when the big space events that involved Russians occurred, we spoke with each other. And we knew that an icon had died. An icon had died. 34 years old. Mm -hmm. We don't get to pick how long we get to live, but we can risk enough to make the investment of our life worthwhile. Turiuri Gagar, who opened the door to space to humankind. Bojeslavia! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.